so we have five kinds of hypersensitivity reactions but uh, but usually we don't talk about the fifth type okay so i will be talking about the difference between like type 5 hyper hypersensitivity is quite similar to type 2 hypersensitivity what will be the difference i will be talking about that so mainly we will be talking about hypersensitivity as four types so we are having four types of hypersensitivity okay what are what are these four types type 1 hypersensitivity yes type 1 is anaphylactic okay so we also call it as immediate hypersensitivity okay so the other name for this one is immediate hypersensitivity second one is the type 2 it's not cell mediated cell mediated is which one cell mediated is type 4 okay let me tell you the dif uh, major difference first of all we are having four kinds of hypersensitivity type 1 type 2 and type 3 are antibody mediated hypersensitivity which means you will be using your antibodies okay which kind of antibodies i will be talking about that later okay type 4 hypersensitivity is not antibody mediated it is the cell mediated hypersensitivity okay now type 1 is immediate one type 2 is cytotoxic type 3 type 3 type 3 in, in type 3 you will be having immunocomplex okay what is immunocomplex what is immune complex yeah immune complex is whenever the antigen binds with the antibody okay and that complex we call it as immune complex or immunocomplex okay we'll be talking about how this immunocomplex will be disturbing your uh, machinery of the body later on so type 4 hypersensitivity is cell mediated right type 4 hypersensitivity is cell mediated and also called as yes delayed, delayed hypersensitivity <laughs> It's also called as delayed hypersensitivity. Almost it takes about 48 hours, 48 hours to show its action. For example, you are having Mantux tuberculin test to diagnose the tuberculosis, right? And that is the classical example of type 4 hypersensitivity. Now, examples are very, very important because uh, they give you any kind of scenario and that scenario you have to identify which kind of disease they are talking about. Now, accordingly, whenever you will be able to recognize that which kind of disease is this one so for example they are talking about tuberculosis okay so you have to identify which kind of hypersensitivity they are talking about okay some questions they can ask for example uh, they are talking about the test uh, for example Man mantix tuberculin test okay in which uh, we use to diagnose the tb okay they will not give you the types type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 what is the option they will give you the examples from these hypersensitivities for example they will give you the allergy for example they will give you the asthma in first option they will give you the good pasture syndrome in second one they will give you the sle systemic lupus from the third one and they can give dermatitis so you have to know that which kind of example belongs to which kind of hypersensitivity so accordingly in this case dermatitis will be the correct answer okay these questions will be may be asked in i form they will not be asking such kind of questions in croc okay so you have to prepare your mind according to both the exams okay so let's start with the type 1 hypersensitivity okay for the new students just now i have discussed about the hypersensitivity reactions there are four kinds of hypersensitivity reactions type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 type 1 is also called as immediate type 2 is also called as the cytotoxic type 3 is also called as immunocomplex and type 4 is cell mediated and also called as delayed kind of hypersensitivity type 1 type 2 type 3 are antibody mediated antibody mediated and type 4 is cell mediated okay type 4 is cell mediated okay now let's talk about the type 1 hypersensitivity first of all okay shall I up the board So let's talk about the mechanism, let's talk about the pathophysiology behind the type 1 hypersensitivity, how the person may get type 1 hypersensitivity, then we, will talk, then we will be talking about the signs and symptoms for such patients, how you can identify such patients who are having the type 1 hypersensitivity, which kind of immunoglobulin is responsible for causing the type 1 hypersensitivity, right? So let's begin with the type 1. 
type 1 hypersensitivity reaction okay so first of all which kind of immunoglobulin is involved IgE. yeah immunoglobulin e. e okay immunoglobulin are also called as antibodies how many kinds of immunoglobulin do we have five, five. yeah so uh, you can remember them with a mnemonic g a m e and d okay gamed okay so igg iga igm ige and igd okay fine so immunoglobulin e is involved in the type 1 hypersensitivity reactions okay now let's imagine one scenario okay that will help you in uh, imagine the situation what is happening actually as far as pathophysiology is concerned of type type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so uh, let's say a guy uh, who is having the allergy to some pollen grains and he is having usually seasonal kind of allergy for example spring season comes okay and there you are having you know uh, falling of the leaves from the trees and all these things are happening he went into the garden first of all he don't know he doesn't know yet that he is having some kind of allergy to these uh, some kind of pollen grains okay he went into the garden what happens is he will be inhaling those pollen grains with the air okay as the air goes in with that pollen grains are also coming into the lungs eventually of that particular person now still he will be going home and nothing will be happening okay no problem at all no signs of hypersensitivity will be seen in such patients okay so till here what actually happened in that particular person okay so let's say we are having the macrophage over here okay let's say this is the macrophage i'm just simply writing m okay this is the macrophage over here and you know macrophage is also called as antigen presenting cell apc macrophage is also called as antigen presenting cell whatever pollen grains he is he was inhaling those are the antigens for the body those are the antigens for the body okay so here let's say this is the site over the macrophage and over here this is the pollen grain this is the antigen right this is the antigen now macrophage is having the antigen and macrophage is also called as antigen presenting cell this is the apc antigen presenting cell now he will be showing this antigen to the t cells to the t helper cells okay that's why we are calling them as antigen presenting they present the antigen to the t helper cells now as these macrophages will present the antigen to the t helper cells t helper cells will will be coming over here so let's say here is the t helper cell okay i'm writing it simply t here is the t helper cell it will be binding over here okay and this formation of this complex over here we call it as primer we call it as primer so this is the primer over here this formation is called as primer okay some people call it as rosette formation okay some people call it as rosette <coughs> formation okay so we are having this formation we are having this complex primer over here till now everything is clear now what will happen t helper cells will take the help of b cells t helper cells will take the help of b cells so here are the b cells okay here are the b cells as the b cells will be activated they will activate the plasma cells they will activate plasma, plasma cells plasma cells are also called as plasmocyte okay plasmo site and what is the function of plasma site or plasma cell plasma cell produces the immunoglobulin or antibody in this case which kind of immunoglobulin will be produced e. I mean, immunoglobulin e will be produced so here is the immunoglobulin e production immunoglobulin e production okay so till this position we were having the immunoglobulin e production so first time when he went into the garden and he inhaled the pollen grains with the air so what happened macrophages present the antigen to the t helper cells then t helper cells take the help of b helper cell, b cells b cells will will be activating plasma cells plasma cells will producing will be producing immunoglobulin e till now everything is fine no signs and symptoms have been seen now let's so what happened till now immunoglobulin e is there inside the blood of this person okay but before immunoglobulin e was not present okay now immunoglobulin e is there let's say on the next day again he visited the garden okay again he went into the garden same thing will be happening pollen grains will be going inside the lungs of that person right 
now because he, this person is having immunoglobulin E, you are having mast cells inside your body. You are having mast cells. So let's say here, here are the mast cells. Okay, let's these are the mast cells over here. Okay, now these mast cells, you know, immunoglobulin is there. Immunoglobulin, immunoglobulin will be binding to these mast cells. Okay, so let's say these immunoglobulin, they will be binding to these mast cells. These are the immunoglobulin E. Again, the pollen grain will come inside, which means antigen is coming inside. Now, this antigen will be binding to these antibodies. Right? This is the antigen. This is the antigen. As this antigen will be binding to the immunoglobulin, okay, this mast cell will be activated. Mast cell will be activated. And these mast cells are filled up with inflammatory cytokines. You know, histamine, heparin, leukotrienes, all these things are filled up over here. Okay. And as these mast cells will be activated, it will be degranulating. It will degranulate. Degranulate means it will be bursting off and whatever content is present inside this mast cell, it will be coming in the blood vessels. Okay. So what, what are the contents? These contents are histamine. Okay. Histamine is a major one. Histamine can be there. Heparin can be there. Some kind of leukotrienes can be there. Some kind of prostaglandins can be there. Okay. So these kind of product, products are present inside the mast cells, but major one you should remember is histamine. So now what happened is histamine is present in the blood circulation. Okay. Now what are the functions of histamine? Histamine is a potent vasodilator. Okay. So now what will happen? Let's say this is the blood vessel. Let's say this is the blood vessel present over here and we are having histamine inside the blood vessel. Okay. What the histamine will do? Histamine will increase the permeability of the blood vessel. Histamine will increase the permeability of the blood vessel. So now whatever fluid is present over here. Okay. It will try to leak into the tissues. Right. It will be leaking out into the tissues because here, you know, you are having the tissues present over here. These are the tissues, let's say. <coughs> These are tissues. Okay. So can I say this person may be having edema later on? Because fluid is getting into the tissues. What will, ha what will be happening over here? What will be happening to the blood flow inside the blood vessel? Blood flow inside the blood vessel will be decreased. What will happen to the blood pressure? Decreased. Later on, this patient may be having shock. What is the shock? What is the definition of the shock? Lowering of the blood pressure. Okay. So this person may have shock. Which kind of shock this person may have? Anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock. Okay. To overcome from the shock. Okay. You give them adrenaline or epinephrine intramuscularly. Okay. Fine. So you give them epinephrine for the treatment purpose. Okay, epinephrine for the treatment purpose, you give them epinephrine. Okay, till now everything is clear. How this mechanism is happening? What about the pathophysiology? Okay, so once again, I'm repeating. First of all, this person visited to the garden for the first time. He will be having production of immunoglobulin E meanwhile. So what will happen? Antigen will be binding to the macrophage. This is the macrophage. Okay, now macrophage will be presenting this antigen as they are antigen presenting cell. They will be presenting this antigen to the T helper cells. T helper cell will be activating the B cells. B cell will be activating the plasma cells. Plasma cell will be producing the immunoglobulin E. As this person will be visiting next time to this garden, as the pollen grains will be coming inside the lungs of this person, what will happen then? This immunoglobulin which has been produced, they will be binding to the mast cells and the antigen or pollen grain will be binding, will be binding to the immunoglobulin E. Now again, what will be happening? Mast cell will be activated. As the mast cell will be activated, it will degranulate. If it will degranulate, inflammatory cytokines will be releasing out from this mast cell. What are these inflammatory cytokines? These are the histamine, heparin, leukotrienes, prostaglandins and all these things, right? Histamine is the potent one. Now histamine we know this is the vasodilator. It increases the permeability of the blood vessel, right? Okay, so ves vessel will be dilating. Blood pressure will be dropping, blood flow will be dropping, so blood pressure will be dropping. This person may be having shock, anaphylactic shock can be seen in such patients in severe situations. Okay, so type this was about the type 1 hypersensitivity. Everyone is clear? 
Yeah. Okay. So what can be the example you can see over here? First of all, what can be the example? There is uh, one simple mnemonic uh, for remembering the hypersensitivities. And the mnemonic is acid, A-C-I-D. Okay. This is type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. Okay. For now, I am considering about type A. Okay. Meanwhile, keep this in mind. Okay. How this mnemonic will be uh, adjusting over here. So, A4. Yeah, so I'm writing, uh, shall I write examples over here? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so A4, it can be any kind of allergy. So any kind of allergy will be coming in the category of okay. type 1 hypersensitivity, any kind of anaphylactic shock, which is the very dangerous situation. Anaphylactic shock will be also coming in the category of type 1 hypersensitivity. A4, asthma will be coming into the category of type 1 hypersensitivity. What is happening in the asthma, bronchial asthma? It is a kind of COPD. Now because fluid is coming outside the blood vessel, okay, it can cause bronchoconstriction. It can cause bronchoconstriction. So what is happening? If the bronchoconstriction will be happening, oxygen will not be able to go properly inside the lungs. Okay, and CO2 will not be able to come outside. So CO2 will be trapped inside the lungs hypercapnia situation can be there in such situation respiratory acidosis can be seen okay so asthma is also the example for type 1 hypersensitivity reactions any doubt no so type 1 hypersensitivity is clear i hope right okay shall we move on to the next hypersensitivity next hypersensitivity is the type 2 hypersensitivity okay so